So in this video, we're gonna talk about Grin's new mainline super harness. Now this is like a standard e-bike harness that connects to the motor controller and branches out to throttles, brakes and stuff, except this one's kind of super. It's got a very active circuit board that has all kinds of extra functionality. So first, a little bit of a backstory. It's been known for quite a while that the ASI motor controllers have great support for third-party e-bike displays. Those range from very small little OLED screens to big color displays that go right on the handlebar. And in around 2019, 2020, we decided to support those by including an extra connector on our phase runner and base runner motor controllers. In addition to having a cycle analyst plug, we put on a new nine pin connector that brought out the five volts, the transmit RX, TX from the display communication, which should in theory have allowed us to also support these other display choices and give our customers the option of having a detailed analytics cycle analyst based conversion or a more mainstream run of the mill where you have five levels of assist and just see your power and battery charge level. Unfortunately, we hit three major showstoppers that prevented us from moving forward with that plan on that earlier time frame. <laughs> Finally, by the end of last year in 2023, we got the 6.025 firmware revision that solved all of these issues. But we still had the problem of dealing with the limited number of analog inputs. And that's one of the key things that this super harness achieves. In our cycle analyst platform, we were able to combine the throttle control and the braking control by merging those into a single wire so that we only had one input being used by the motor controller for both throttling and regen. So inside this super harness, we have not just a harness combining wires together, but a full active circuit board that's able to mirror that same core functionality of the cycle analyst. So let's show you how this works. Our super harness has three different input plugs to it. One five pin plug for the display, a three pin plug for the throttle, and a four pin plug that has both digital and analog e-brake input lines for it. If you have a bike set up that has simply a common digital brake cutoff lever, it now behaves like it does with a cycle analyst. If you squeeze the brake, you'll get a baseline amount of regen around 25% and now your throttle becomes repurposed to control that region and increase it. So if you squeeze the brake and then go full throttle, you get to up to 100% regen. Alternately, you can also plug in an analog brake sensor. Now these ones don't just close the switch when you close the brakes, but they act just like a throttle, providing a one to four volt signal that increases the more you squeeze the lever. This gives you that full modulation that you need to have zero to 100% regen without having to touch your throttle. And finally, we've added support for a third mode of regen control, and that's bi-directional throttles. So these are throttles that have a midpoint in the motion, you twist it one direction to accelerate, and you twist it the other direction to do regenerative braking. Any one of those or any combination of those can be plugged into the super harness. It will automatically process those inputs and then send a single wired control to the motor controller to throttle or regen the bike. So that's one of the core functions of the super harness. The second core function that this brings to the table is bicycle lighting control. Now most of these displays have the option to turn on or off your bike lights by pressing and holding the up button. Our super harness is able to sniff the communication going on between the display and the controller, sense when it's telling the setup to turn on the lights and actively turn on its own front light port. The super harness also has full control over when you're braking, and so we've added a second light port for your rear light that can be configured either as a brake light to turn on just when you squeeze the brakes, or it can be configured as a general purpose light that turns on and off with the display light control. And you can even have it serve both purposes, where it will blink as a standard rear light, and once you squeeze the brakes, your rear light turns solid. So while we pursued this project over the last several years, we've acquired dozens of samples of displays from all different companies, but have narrowed it down to three options that we think are most suited for initial launch of this super harness. Uh, the smallest of that is the SW102 display. And it's a platform that's often sold as egg riders with custom firmware on them. And it's great for a super discreet, low visibility display. You can see the speed and the battery state of charge to some level, but you don't get any useful data like the watts or the amps or a real-time readout of the voltage while you're riding. The two larger displays that we have are both from the company ATP. And we really think they set the bar super high for all the capabilities and the user interface for a full graphic e-bikes display. These ones actually show how many amps or watts you're pulling from the motor controller. 
they show the actual voltage of the battery and not just the five level bar graph. And they have all kinds of customizability in the display screen readouts. They have a real time clock and a very intuitive to use interface system. There's also a few customizations that we had to do here to support Grin's vision for universality. Uh, the first is that all three of the displays that we sell will work with up to 72 volt battery packs. So you don't have this compatibility breakthrough if you ever do want to upgrade to a higher voltage system. And they're also customized to handle regenerative braking properly. If you take most of the stock displays and do regen, instead of seeing negative watts on the power graph, you end up seeing thousands of watts show up because they're not meant to hand signed negative values for current. So hopefully this is an update that interests and excites a lot of you Grin followers out there. We know we've been asked repeatedly from people who want to have a less analytic and more basic kind of display with their conversion systems. And we're finally able to deliver that without compromising all the other great features that we've been able to incorporate through our cycle analyst. So now you can get the best of both worlds, all that wonderful regen braking control and a nice colorful display on the middle of your handlebar. Unfortunately, we hit three major showstoppers that prevented us from moving forwards with that plan on that earlier time frame. The first of these was a real deal breaker in how the behavior of throttle and pedal sensors behave together. With a version 5 ASI firmware, the throttle control was also limited by which assist level you were in. And if you're in zero assist, you also had no throttle. In a first level of assistance, your throttle was very wimpy, and it was only when you reached maximum assist that your throttle would have its full potential. Now for us, throttles need to be always independent of the pedal behavior, and from the moment you turn on the bike, we feel that you should be able to get full power when you go full throttle. The second deal concerned the setup and configuration. Both the communication line for the display port was shared with the communication line for connecting the motor controller to a computer. So when you wanted to set up all the parameters on the motor controller to set the behavior, you wouldn't be able to do that while the display was plugged in, but the display needed to be plugged in in order to turn the system on and off. And that meant quite an awkward jumble of cable harnesses and bypass jumpers just to set up the controller. And it meant there was no easy way to review what was going on with the motor controller while the display was plugged in. And finally, there was a big hardware issue concerning the number of available analog inputs in ASI's motor controller series. In our hardware, there's only three inputs at our disposal, but we really need to have a temperature sensor input, a torque sensor input, a throttle sensor input, and a proportional regen brake sensor input. So with four input signals needed, but only three lines available, we would have to drop one in order to accommodate the other, and that would break the universality of all the systems that we try to sell, where you could plug and play any motor, any kind of controls without changing all the parameters. 